Hello my fellow gamers and welcome to the showcase of 45 strategy games from both indie and AAA developers in 2021 so far. It's been a great year for fans of any strategy subgenre, be it RTS, turn-based, 4x, tactical RPG combat or simulation management. My name is Peter and I will give you the basics on each of these games, while for a more in-depth look, please use the links which will show up up here and in the description. Humankind is almost out and we will be able to combine 60 different historical cultures in a revolutionary new spin on the civilization gameplay. Here fame is a new and unifying victory condition. Every great deed you accomplish, every moral choice you make, every battle won will build up your fame and leave a lasting impact on the world. Your avatar will evolve visually over the course of the game as your civilization develops from the ancient to the modern age. Combat is turn-based and no stacking is allowed. You can discover wonders of the natural world but also claim and build your own. City of Gangsters lets you build up and manage a whole crime syndicate in that fantastic crime era that was the Prohibition from 1920 to 1933 in the USA. You get to build speakeasies, manage production chains and resources, smuggle goods from out of town and bribe the police to look the other way. This requires a powerful crew who you have to keep paying, arming and organizing to keep your rivals under your thumb. Territory under your control will provide an income base and a wealth of opportunities for further growth and expansion. High Fleet is a mix of arcade combat, exploration management and diplomacy in a diesel punk universe. You get to play with a fleet of giant flying ships and control them in spectacular air warfare. Battles in high fleet are won by skillfully moving into positions which allow you to exploit your enemy's weak spots. There is an in-game ship editor in which you can build the perfect fleet to suit your style of fighting. Many distinctive ship options and upgrade paths ensure the game will provide plenty of replay value. Patreon has all the bells and whistles you would expect, but it has a unique social dynamic system to boot. There is a large research tree and a complex happiness system where each individual citizen has his needs, desires and issues. Add to that different social groups which each react differently to your every decision in matters of religion, immigration, loyalty, poverty and so on. Patreon also features harsh weather and different seasons as an extra element of survival mechanics. Dream Engine's Nomad Cities features a flying city in a post-apocalyptic setting. You manage a small nomadic tribe as you research, craft and build infrastructure. Gameplay is about finding rare resources, planning and building automated production lines, homes and food for citizens, carefully managing your fuel and weight with exploration using a theme bot. Every biome has an unlimited variety of procedurally generated landing areas that each have different resources, opportunities and challenges. Stellar Warfare is a lone developer's dream game realized as a classic RTS in a science fiction setting with large-scale ship-to-ship combat and a dazzling array of weaponry. The game is packed with different modes, starting with skirmish and multiplayer but going as far as battle royale and wave defense. It features complete 3D space movement and a fleet editor with full ship customization. There are 40 buildings to place and 5 different neutral buildings to capture while battling it out with amazing looking ships. Orcs Must Die 3 is the latest addition to this fantastic franchise of incredibly fun games. The combat is so fluid and it's a total blast to play even if you dislike the whole subgenre. It sucked me in even though I am the first person to run to the hills at even a mention of tower defense. It is a third person action game spiced up with setting up all kinds of traps, spells, skills and war machines to stop wave after wave of orcs and a whole assortment of other monsters from entering magical rifts than the world of puny humans who they would gladly dismember. Black Geyser Couriers of Darkness is a game which aims to hit you squarely at your nostalgia glasses, especially if you have a soft spot in your heart for Baldur's Gate and Icewind Dale. It is an isometric party-based fantasy RPG set in a kingdom ravaged by civil war and a mysterious curse of greed. It features challenging real-time tactical combat with pause, deep lore and memorable companions. There will be 5 playable races and 13 unique classes who can use dozens of spells and skills and equip a range of weapons and armor. Carrier Command franchise is making another comeback and this time with a full-blown sequel. If you never played it or heard about this game before, it is a real-time strategy game where you are the commander of a futuristic massive carrier capable of deploying a vast array of aircraft and amphibious units. But you can also at any moment take control of every single vehicle to duke it out at the front lines against AI or other players. Simulation and survival games are a dime a dozen but very few are as good or fun as going medieval. Everything from character development to town building is masterfully designed to give you as much creative freedom as possible while also enough structure and guidance so you don't lose your way. There is an innovative research system, many different resources to collect, numerous objects to build and on multiple levels at that. Characters age, bleed, heal and practice skills every day and there is even a world map and diplomacy. 
Imagine Earth is a sci-fi strategy plant simulation in which you develop new civilizations in distant corners of the universe. You harvest resources and produce goods and then establish space trade. From there, alliances are born and economic warfare is waged to take over competing corporations. New tech allows you to protect your population from rising sea levels brought on by exhaust emissions and ground pollution. Other disasters are asteroids, volcanoes, space raiders and even alien investors. The Castle, a base-building RTS from Mana Potion Studios where you collect resources resources, construct buildings and fortifications, expand your kingdom, train several types of soldiers and build siege equipment because come night you get attacked by the forces of darkness bent on leveling your main keep and burning down your kingdom. A demo is available right now on Steam, monsters will come back every night so build those walls high and train many archers. Nebuchadnezzar is a city building game set in ancient Mesopotamia and its campaign follows millennia of cultural and economical development of several civilizations. Players will get to manage everything from plowing fields to creating products as they must oversee agriculture and the manufacturing of goods for the city's population. Developers from Nepo Games have prepared modding support as well as additional content. Evil Genius 2 World Domination A game in which you are THE criminal mastermind set on achieving global domination even if you first have to destroy the world to own it. It's a satirical spy-fi lair builder where you build a massive island base, train your minion workforce, recruit powerful henchmen, carry out criminal missions and fight the forces of justice with traps and dastardly devices. Dorf Romantic is a stark contrast to this as it is a brainchild of four game design students, a peaceful building strategy and puzzle game in which you create a beautiful ever-growing village landscape by placing different tiles in a variety of colorful biomes. It offers a challenge with high scores for those who are looking for bragging rights if they can carefully and strategically solve puzzles. There are even quests which require special designs and reward you with extra tiles with which to expand your creation. Old World is a 4x game where every turn represents a year and you lead a nation and your own dynasty. There is a deep and dynamic event system that generates a story based on your decisions, accomplishments and characters. Each nation has four noble families who can be granted stewardship of your cities, with each one providing unique and powerful bonuses. There are resources, tech, units, improvements, wonders and an innovative order and ambition system for unique movement and victory mechanics. Industries of Titan is a game on a far smaller scale but much more invested management. You are the CEO of your own company and must flourish or lose everything on the surface of Titan. There are many buildings to construct, few types of resources to gather, combat ships to build and crew, rebels to fight, citizens to squeeze for profit and employees to manage as well as many interesting game mechanics to master, like air, gas and pollution mixes, waste generation and cleanup, power transportation and more. Battle Sector is a fast-paced turn-based strategy game set in your favorite chainsaw and bolter universe. You will get to pick your own space marine squads, equip them with over 50 weapons and use over 60 abilities on the field of battle alongside tanks, dreadnoughts and even mighty heroes. This game has live and asynchronous multiplayer and hot seat modes available on top of the single player campaign which starts Tyranids against Blood Angels and Skirmish against the AI where you can play as the Tyranids. If you haven't played a good strategy game set in the Second World War in a while, then Strategic Mind Fight for Freedom is a good place to start. It's part of a long-running franchise known for its detailed historical settings, turn-based combat and single-player campaigns. This one offers the British and the US ones and even some alternate history past the end of the war and into the conflict with the USSR. Customization, upgrades and management of units and armies is another hallmark of this game with 10 different unit classes available. If you prefer Might and Magic, then there is The Hand of Merlin, a squadron-based roguelite RPG set in the Arthurian legend in which you search for the lost fragments of your soul, scattered across parallel dimensions and save the planets you land on along the way. You lead a party of three heroes, each a different class, who you can level up, upgrade and equip. You can find or trade for items, their skills produce synergies and there are also cover, ambushes and coordinated attacks against humans and demons. God games are too few and far between, so I am happy to showcase the Universe Sim, a game in which you manage your own planets as you guide a civilization of nuggets through the ages. You influence their decisions and punish the unfaithful with a wide range of apocalyptic godly abilities. You also interact with objects, create disasters and launch clueless creatures into the orbit but do watch out the planet's ecosystem is a fragile thing and it's fully similar. And it will occasionally fight back with tornadoes and earthquakes. The only thing rarer than a god game is a good Warhammer game. Age of Sigmar Stormgrounds plays as good as it looks. It is a dynamic turn-based strategy game where you lead a highly customizable force and unlock new types of units, powerful equipment and devastating skills through victories in a non-linear campaign. During each new playthrough you will have to overcome new odds in order to find extra unique items and gear. Online PvP duels are practically a bonus feature here. 
Slipways is an innovative grand strategy set in space with the idea that a single game shouldn't last for tens of hours but rather just under one hour. It achieves this lofty goal by giving you a lot of direct and effective power over your galactic empire, planets and ships. This is why almost everything is procedurally generated and each sector of the galaxy offers wildly different challenges. The technologies offer mind-blowing effects so you get to use only some of them in each new game. Inheritors 2078 is an RTS FPS hybrid with even some third-person combat added to the mix for some extra spice. It supports multiplayer and co-op and it is set in the near future when the world and the solar system is a battlefield for advanced AI and robots who have risen up against humanity. Each playable side has its own tactics, buildings and special units while the player can use an avatar position system to become any unit on the battlefield and fight in the battle in third or first person. Hold Warlords has been delayed several times but this time we take command of the Mongol hordes, Imperial warriors and Samurai clansmen lay siege to Japanese castles and fortified Chinese cities. New additions are gunpowder-fueled siege weaponry and even rockets, as well as AI-controlled warlords that we can employ to build up industry or armies and even take command of units in the field. They have unique perks, characteristics and upgradable abilities. Real-time strategy games are a rare sight these days, so I am happy to be presenting 5 nations to you. Its sci-fi setting, art style and gameplay give me a strong Star Trek Armada vibe and I used to adore playing that game. 5 nations has voice acting in all of its 56 campaign missions, while in the skirmish mode you get access to 20 maps and the AI to fight against, but you can also make your own maps. You build up your base, construct buildings and mine resources to produce a gigantic armada of various spacecraft. Voxel Tycoon, on the other hand, is a management simulation game where you also mine resources, but here you build entire factory chains, research new technologies and dive deep into the transportation and supply chain management to get those goods to customers in their growing cities. The free camera allows for the first person view of terrain, which which you can terraform yourself and see the physics simulation of vehicles which are all different and behave differently depending on their cargo. It's moddable from day one and has Steam Workshop support. Before We Leave is a non-violent city building game where you grow, gather and manage resources to help settlers bring back their civilization post-apocalypse and after many years of living in a shelter. You not only have this hexagonal planet to repopulate but also the entire solar system. You will rediscover technologies, deal with mysteries and set up many production chains. Eximus is an FPS RTS hybrid that focuses on squad based combat and vehicles of war. It features a 5v5 multiplayer experience with each team being comprised of 4 squad officers and 1 single commander in a post apocalyptic urban environment. As a commander, you build a base, train an army and call down support abilities. While as the officer, you equip battle suits, lead your infantry squads into combat, capture resources and upgrade weapons. Buildings Have Feelings 2 is a whole different take on the city management games, because these buildings can walk and talk to one another, make plans and create entire communities of neighborly buildings who have, that's right, feelings. The game spans from the Victorian era right through to the modern day with different jobs and functions these buildings have and complement each other to grow and expand into a bustling metropolitan center. The only thing they fear is being demolished. Cartel Tycoon, a story-driven business sim inspired by the 80s narco trade. In this game, you will build an empire of illicit substances production and smuggling chains while dealing with your rival cartels, your rogue lieutenants, authorities and public opinion and also to conquer neighboring regions, unlock new upgrades and powerful research options while dealing with procedurally generated events. On the other hand, if you ever wanted a Crusader Kings game in a Stellaris-like setting, then Star Dynasties is the game for you. It's a role-playing sci-fi strategy set in a divided galaxy following the destruction of Earth. These next ones are just some of the features this game has. You can customize your characters, have descendants, expand your empire through conquest or diplomacy, have vassals, host lavish feasts, marry off your family members, use spies, blackmail and every other trick in the book. Finally we get an indie game which adds combat to the banished formula of a survival builder. And the best part? It's about freaking vikings! In Frozenheim you get to build and supply a viking village complete with walls but you also get to raid enemies for loot, on foot and in boats, in single or multiplayer. So in essence, this is a survival city builder with elaborate management gameplay with multiple progression trees and RTS tactical combat. You will even be able to build shrines of Asgard. Distant Kingdoms is also a city builder but full of fantasy creatures. It's a new and unique blend of social management, exploration, adventure and city building gameplay. You get to help the humans, dwarves, elves and orcs of a fantasy land forge a new civilization with a network of towns and villages. There are production chains, citizen classes, a whole world to explore with the adventure parties and even troublesome creatures to defend against like dragons, imps, wraiths and trolls. 
Fields of Glory 2 Medieval is a turn-based tactical game set in the High Middle Ages spanning from the 11th to the 13th century. In it you can lead different armies from Ireland to the Mongols, 29 nations in total, with 57 different army lists and more than 100 historically accurate units. Besides 4 campaigns, there are quick, custom and multiplayer modes alongside mod support. Fields of Glory concentrates on battle without moving armies on a strategic map. Next game is a throwback to Populous and Black and White, which is to say, a god simulation game. In Fatidium, you are a deity which messes with the lives of mortals during the day, while at night you play with buildings and entire settlements. In the campaign mode, you are a new god rising to glory by amassing followers and through them accumulating power. The world has more than one god in it, so prepare to fight for your adoration with thunderstorms and other disasters or miracles. If you have managed everything from an ancient city to a space station, how about you try something down to earth like a complex real world farm. Farm Manager 2021 starts off easy with many plant species, but then it ramps up the complexity with bees, all sorts of farm animals, a fish farm, ostrich, wild boar and quail farm. Then the real work starts with harvesting, employees, transport, machinery maintenance, selling and buying goods and all around work from dusk till dawn. But if you still prefer the Dark Ages, then Siege Survival Gloria Victus has you covered with a mix of survival strategy and resource management where you build your camp, craft supplies and scavenge around to supply the soldiers holding back the invaders. You have to survive until the help arrives while facing a multitude of tough moral choices. There will be hunger, wounds, disease, despair, but also growing tensions between the civilians and the defenders. Think this war of mine in the medieval era. In a move that stunned half the Total War community and sent the other half into a frenzy, Creative Assembly released a remastered version of Total War Rome with both the Alexander and Barbarian Invasion DLCs. The units get a 3D facelift, ultra high definition resolutions are implemented, as well as the enhanced battlefield and campaign map environments. 16 new factions are playable with Steam Workshop mod support, UI scaling, a new agent and cross-platform multiplayer. Cyberpunk Team Rebirth has just gotten a lot more interesting with Skid Cities a city-building game which is very reminiscent of the old SimCity. The main twist beyond the setting is building into the skies and underground with stackable buildings and sky roads. A lone developer's creation where you build slums, through skyscrapers, cyborg nests, black sites, factories and create a utopia or a dystopia with evil corporations and even organized crime. In space-based Artopia, however, you are a much more benevolent builder as you try to bring a space station slash alien hotel to a 5-star rating while alien bug infestations and local pirates do their best to dirty your reputation. Gameplay is a mix of economy simulation and empire building paired with the classical RTS skirmishes and a good dose of humor. It offers a single-player campaign, cooperative and competitive multiplayer modes for up to 4 players. Base 1 is a space station building and management game in which you take control of a whole network of these stations and their crew's tasks and well-being. Players get to choose these crews who have their own unique perks, characteristics and traits. Resources are power, heating, oxygen and water supply, while they are defensive cannons which protect against asteroids and defend against space pirates. A custom game mode allows players to build their own campaigns with conditions and quests they create. Back on solid ground, Polyville Canyon lets you build charming and peaceful little cities with a population of easygoing citizens who bring their own bonuses. You can use over 100 unique items including residences, commercial buildings, city services, decorations, monuments and more. There is a first person view as well as multiple locations to start from. The happier your neighbors are, the more income you will earn when a new train arrives in tycoon style income generation which will let you expand your city. Placefront is an indie game which has a novel city building approach about placing pre-made buildings and objects with a cartoonish art style and drivable vehicles, everything from cars to planes, to get around your own city complete with ramps to jump from. But its most interesting feature is the possibility of building not just a modern sprawling metropolitan city, but an Egyptian oasis or a medieval enclave in different maps and even on the same ones. Reshaping Mars is a simulation of colony building on a hex-based map of the Red Planet. Your mission is to reshape Mars into a livable planet using new technologies, colonists and minerals and energy which you have to mine and generate on the planet. The harsh environment has low air pressure, high radiation, large sandstorms, so prepare for various natural disasters. The colonists have various needs, so they require living and entertainment facilities, food, clothing and transportation to make them happy. The Red Sands await. And all these games were just from the first part of 2021. My next videos will cover more new and upcoming strategy games of all genres. I want to thank you for watching and invite you to join my channel to get notified when I post more videos like this one.